What are some of the other sneaker brands that you like to work with, if you haven't already worked with them? Um, so I've worked with Puma, I've worked with Converse, Timberland, New Balance. Um, the one that I've never worked with that I would love to work with is obviously Adidas now. I think, you know, the momentum that they've been doing has been amazing. Um, and, you know, I think it's interesting that we are friendly, we know of each other, but we've never worked with each other. And I think it's interesting that like we've sort of are circulating um, our potent, our parallel careers are like on a very upward trajectory, so to speak. You know, like the momentum is like going really well for both of our brands independently. And I think it'd be dope if we like finally culminated to do something together. With that said, yeah. have you been eyeballing any particular Adidas silhouette that you want no. to do over? No. No, I don't. I don't do that. I love Adidas. I mean, I wear them all the time, but um, I've been in through enough collaborative projects where I know that the fun part, the part where you start to decide silhouettes and colors and fabrications and release strategy, that's, that's the one yard line. Like, you got to get from 99 to the one yard line, and most of that is financial, legal, contractual, all those things have to be in alignment. The fun part is like towards the end. But so I know I'm very realistic when it comes to talking with companies about like, I know what their expectations need to be and I make sure that like both parties are happy, which is why I think, you know, we've been around for like almost 20 years now as a brand and we've been collaborating with all these companies. And I think it's because when I go into an, a situation, it's not all about like, I gotta win, I don't care what the fuck happens on the other side of the table, I wanna make sure both parties win, and that just keeps the longevity going because everyone wants to keep working with us, you know? Describe what your personal sneaker collection consists of. How many pairs, mm. brands, do you got a rough estimate? Yeah, um, I've got about 2,000 pairs of shoes. Um, about 1,800 are in a storage facility off in New Jersey, real safe. Uh, and I got about 200 on regular rotation at home. Um, and it's all brands. I mean, I pride myself on my collection because it's not a hype beast collection. Like, I, I'll go to like VIM and Models and pick something off the bottom shelf because I love, to me it's like, to be able to get complimented on like, yo, them Yeezys, like yeah, like obviously, you know, but like to be like, yo, what are those? And it's like, oh, they're an ACG from 2002 that was on the sale rack of, a Nike factory outlet, like, and to be able to flip it in a way is the ultimate compliment of a sneakerhead, you know what I mean? Like, just, cause it's not about like just buying the hottest shit. It's also about how you rock it and you know, how you sort of remix it with your own style, you know what I mean? Like, a great story is I was in London last week and I was wearing the Yeezys actually and I walked into a- um, Which Yeezy? The Turtle. Turtle. Yeah, yeah. And so I walked into the Stone Island store, right? Uh, you know that brand Stone Island? It's like a high-end British brand. Okay. And so I walked into the store and like, you know, the, the sales clerk greeted me and he was like, oh, how you doing? You know, like, oh, those are, those are nice. You got the Yeezys. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, he's like, I can tell you didn't wait in line for them though. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, everyone who wants them had to wait in a long line. But he's like, I could tell you didn't wait in line. And I was like, how could you tell I didn't wait in line? He's like, I could just tell by the way you carry yourself and how you put your outfit together, I could tell you didn't wait in line for the Yeezys. I was like, yeah, I didn't. And he's like, I knew it. And I was like, that's really interesting that like, person A wears Yeezy and it's like, oh, you waited in line or you paid a thousand dollars for them. And person B is like, I could tell you, you had some sort of in on them. And I was like, that's pretty dope that you were that observant. I was like, that's a good salesperson. <laughs> but I'm sure you, I mean, you see enough people where you're like, you're a beast, you waited in line, you slept four days for these. And someone else walks in and you're probably like, oh, he probably works for somebody or something. All like day, that. man. Yeah. All day. Profiling. Profiling all day. Not too long ago, there was a picture flown around the internet. You sitting in your office. Yeah. And there was a little gem on the top shelf. What was it? Dunk as B Pigeon. Mm. Is that ever going to see the light of day? No comment. Ah! Uh. <laughs> you heard that car horn? That was the picture. It just went uh. B! Like, <laughs> no comment. So. Your collection as of right now, yeah. even worn, let's say before worn, how much do you think everything really costs like collectively? Um, it's hard to say. I would say... Please, I people, don't be scared. I think I spent in my life like half a million on shoes. But the value of it is 
I think it's almost, yeah, I'm, I'm saving everything, you know, like I don't really throw away stuff. I've got like over 2,000 now. And I think one day what I'd like to do is like donate it all to like a design museum of like the curated view of Jeff's shoe collection. Because I think the beauty of it is not necessarily an individual shoe, but like the whole lineage of it. And when you see the whole thing in its entirety, I think you get a view of like, oh, I could kind of see now where Reed Space and Staple Pigeon and Staple Design Studio all sort of came out of this whole group. And I think that is very interesting as a collection. And that's like priceless to me. You know, you can't, you can't really pull out one shoe and be like, yo, this one's worth this. I would only sort of donate it or sell it as one entirety. So it's priceless. <laughs> Sixth grade is when Jordan 3 came out. Um, and even, I mean, I was buying the Jordan 1s and even before that I was buying the Bo Jacksons and the tra McEnroe Trainers, the Revolutions. I mean, I had one guy offer me like a, like 100, you know what I mean, for like everything. Like everything I own. And I was just like, wow, that's nice. <laughs> but, uh, and it's a nice number, but I just, I don't know. I mean, I just can't 